So hello at home. Since we're stuck here on a little on our little island in the Maldives, we decided to make a small um, online presentations for you at home. And today I'm gonna talk about corals and what are actually corals. So uh, first of all, to start with, um, how much of our planet is actually covered by water? If we look here, it should be actually be called planet ocean. It's covered by nearly three quarter um, of our, our planet is covered by water. Coming to the Maldives, this is ratio is of course much more extreme. In the Maldives, uh, we have 26 atolls and um, all of the islands in the atolls and all of the atolls are built over millions of years by corals. So they're sitting on top of coral reefs. Without corals, there would be no Maldives. And um, coral reefs are actually very important. Um, they only cover a really small area of the tropical oceans, um, but they do support one quarter of all marine species. It's a very diverse place, like jungle on land, we have coral reefs underwater. Um, also, um, they're so important for the fish and marine creatures, but also important for humans as a natural barrier for the coastlines and of course, financially important for tourism and fishing industry. So what are actually corals? Here in the Maldives, we have many different species of corals, but we will class them in two groups. Uh, we have hard corals and we have soft corals. Uh, on the top left here, we can see a brain coral, for example, or a table coral in the bottom corner. Um, Stake horn coral, those are hard corals, they have a hard coral skeleton. Um, they're building actually the reef, tiny little layer by layer, growing to the surface, and generally brownish greenish color. Sometimes the tips a little bit pinkish purplish, but they are not very colorful. And then we have the soft corals, like on the left bottom corner, red, purple, yellow, pink, white, and uh, they're flexible structures, they don't build any coral skeleton. Um, now, what is actually a coral? So, coral is actually a colony of many tiny, single uh, and individual animals. And each little animal is called a polyp and it looks basically like a jellyfish turned upside down and attached to the bottom. In case of a hard coral, these polyps share a common coral skeleton. In case of a soft coral, they only share common tissue. Now, each polyp has a mouth with which to feed and they feed on uh, small zooplankton, tiny animals that drift past and they catch them with their tentacles. On the tentacles they have tiny stinging cells, like jellyfish as well, they are very closely related to jellyfish, and um, they stun their prey and then bring it, catch it, bring it to the mouth and digest it. Then uh, under the stinging cell layer we find tiny single-celled algae, they are called zooxanthellae, and with these tiny algae um, they live in, together in symbiosis and it's a very important partnership since the algae gets a housing in the polyp but the polyp gets energy and food from the algae. The algae in turn uh, does photosynthesis and gets its energy from uh, the sun. That's why we usually find hard coral that contain zooxanthellae in shallower water where it's reached by the sun. And it also gives the greenish brownish color to the hard coral. So if you ever wondered what is coral bleaching, um, coral bleaching happens when ocean temperatures uh, rise to about 30 degrees or higher. Um, the coral 
polyp actually expels the, its tiny little algae and um, since the algae gives the color and the polyp is just transparent we the coral will turn white and bleaches uh, so we can just see the coral skeleton through the polyp and um, if the water cools down quick enough uh, the polyp can reabsorb the, the algae and it can survive without the algae for quite some time feeding on plankton but it will need some energy from photosynthesis and if the water stays long time warm since like we had in 2016 for example then the uh, the coral the polyp dies and we have dead coral that gets overgrown by algae as in the last picture since we have our global warming of course unfortunately we see these bleaching events more frequent um, as you can imagine uh, coral reefs are full of fish life tropical oceans otherwise are a little bit like deserts it's very clear blue water unlike in colder water where we have more nutrients and we find most of the life close to the reef and in the next little episode we will uh, explain to you um, a few of the fish that we can see around here and also talk about turtles, dolphins and so on. Thank you very much. That's it for today. See you next time.